talk about what is happening, the significance. Let's start with the Mosul Museum. Well, the Mosul Museum is um, a major museum in the Middle East. It's one of the largest museums in the area. And it has a remarkable collection of finds that date back to the Neolithic era um, and continue into the Islamic period, so covering thousands of years, going back to about 8,000 BC. What was your reaction when you saw the video yesterday? Well, I think we, all of us who are in the field, were completely horrified. I mean, of course, we expected that something like this might happen um, ever since ISIS took over the area, took over Mosul. But um, to see it actually happen was uh, devastating. And what is their rationale or their, or their, or their, their reasons for doing this? Well, the rationale seems to be from what they are saying on the video, that these are idols and therefore they are false gods and should be destroyed. But um, to me, this actually doesn't make that much sense, since, of course, uh, a lot of this cultural heritage and these antiquities have been visible since the 7th century AD, and they have been there unharmed. So it's not really clear why now this should happen. On the one hand, um, the rationale of it being heretical, right, the false idols. Yes. And on the other hand, uh, uh, it's believed—I I mean, I can't confirm this myself independently—that um, the militants have sold the ancient artifacts on the black market? Well, it seems to be that there is a great deal of selling of antiquities by ISIL, and uh, this has been confirmed by certain people who are watching the trade in antiquities. So they are selling antiquities. Um, this, uh, one of the arguments is that the objects they destroyed yesterday were the larger pieces that could not be moved out and sold. So um, they were more likely to be able to destroy them. I think that a great deal of the discussion uh, here in the West and perhaps throughout the world has focused on the looting um, rather than the issue of cultural cleansing. Um, the destruction of monuments on site is also something to be concerned about. I mean, the looting for the antiquities market, which is an illicit international market, is, is very important to consider because uh, this is very destructive. But the, the blowing up of shrines um, and monuments on site is really horrendous. And this is a, a form of cultural cleansing, certainly, but also ethnic cleansing. Explain. And, well, it's a form of ethnic cleansing because this is a region of the world. Mesopotamia has always been a multicultural, multi ethnic, multilinguistic, and multi religious uh, community, the entirety of the country. And what's happening now is that diversity is being wiped out. So when you wipe out people's monuments and heritage, you erase any record of their ever having been there. And it's a way of creating um, a terra nulla, if you will, a kind of a, a, an empty land that you can conquer and then claim that there was nothing there before. So it's a general erasure and rewriting of history um, of Mesopotamia. Well, UNESCO's uh, director general expressed outrage following the Islamic State's attack on the Mosul Museum. Irina Bokova said, quote, this attack is far more than a cultural tragedy. This is also a security issue, as it fuels sectarianism, violent extremism and conflict in Iraq. The system systematic destruction of iconic components of Iraq's rich and diverse heritage that we have been witnessing over the past months is intolerable, and it must stop immediately. Uh, and, of course, uh, Iraq went uh, um, uh, Iraq went through similar problems, uh, not at this scale, uh, during the in the aftermath of the U.S. invasion uh, and the disorder that followed, when there was also some destruction and looting that occurred. Well, I think that's right. And I think too many people have forgotten that all of this actually began a long time ago. Of course, the scale now is uh, far greater, and, and the slaughter that's taking place of human beings is, is truly horrendous. Um, but the rewriting 
of Iraq's history and the erasure of its past actually started with the 2003 war, if not even with the earlier one. Um, so there has been a great deal of uh, destruction of heritage sites. Um, and the attempt to say that this is ingrained in the culture. I think one large problem is that pundits here in the West um, often say, well, these acts are grounded, are based in the historical reality of the of Iraq, of Mesopotamia. This is a kind of an internal fight between Shia and Sunni. Uh, peoples, and that we should just mind our own business and leave it alone. But it seems to me that this is completely misguided, because what we are saying is that this is based in history. We're trying to set the pundits are trying to say that this is based in a historical reality, when it's not. It's a complete rewriting of what was the historical reality. Now, let's take, for example, the idea of uh, the resurrection of a medieval Islamic state. So, of course, here everybody says, well, they are truly barbaric, they are medieval. But everybody who has read history knows that in the Abbasid Empire, the, the caliphs of the Abbasids valued scholarship, they translated Greek classical texts, they loved the arts and promoted arts and architecture. So it's actually quite false to say that in the Middle Ages they were opposed to these things. I wanted to ask you, Professor Bahraini, <clears throat> going back to 2003, the day after Baghdad fell, that famous scene of the looters coming from the Iraqi museum yes. and the criticism of the U.S. for not protecting the museum, um, going back to that time, declaring that freedom is untidy, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld uh, said the looting in Iraq was a result of pent-up feelings of oppression, that it would subside as Iraqis adjusted to life without Saddam Hussein. He said freedoms untidy, and free people are free to make mistakes and commit crimes and do bad things. They're also free to live their lives and do wonderful things, and that's what's going to happen here. Um, looting, he said, was not uncommon for countries that experience significant social upheaval. Rumsfeld said, stuff happens. I remember his statements very well. I also remember that he was quite taken aback that there was more than one vase in the entire country. And he seemed to have not realized that Iraq is Mesopotamia, the cradle of the world's civilization. And how he did not know that, I'm really not sure. But um, he was clearly very mistaken. Can you talk about the historical legacy of Muslims protecting antiquities, knowledge, philosophy, science? Absolutely. I mean, it's not my specific area of expertise, because I'm a specialist in the pre-Islamic past. But I know enough to know that th this heritage has always been there, that Islamic geographers and travelers and historians have written about places like Babylon and Nineveh in the Middle Ages, the, the caliphs the Abbasid caliphs especially uh, supported uh, the scholarship of the ancient Greek classical texts in philosophy and the sciences in a way that is truly unparalleled, not just in the history of Iraq, but I would say in a, a great part of the world. It's one of the high points of the world's uh, history of scholarly knowledge. And what's been the reaction in the rest of the, throughout the rest of the Middle East, of other governments and, and uh, civil society organizations that they've heard about this uh, as from yesterday? Um, I think that m most of the news that I've heard from all over the Middle East is that people are horrified, that everybody's taken aback, because uh, nobody was expecting this extent of just senseless destruction. Um, of course, this is a very small thing to consider after the mass slaughter, the kidnapping, the rapes, the torture, the, the daily murdering. So this is really very much just a, a kind of a last straw on top of a, a, a terrible annihilation of people. But what I want to stress is that the destruction of this sculpture of of the heritage sites and the ancient Assyrian um, 
and hatchery and sculpture that we saw destroyed in the video, that this is not just about the past. This is about a destruction and an erasure of the history of the people of Iraq as a way to say that they never belonged here. Thank you.